Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and a few weeks back, my uncle got in touch to say he was moving house. He had some model railway stuff up in the loft that needed to go. And did I want to have a look and see if I wanted any of it? When I went down to see what he had, it turns out there was quite a lot of it. Three massive boxes of the stuff, um, two here and one down there. So rather than sort through everything there, I brought it back here so that we can look through it together. And this is where I need your help. After we've been through it, I'd like you to leave a comment down below with an estimate of how much you think it's all worth. The plan is that I'm going to buy the bits that I want to keep, but everything else will be sold on. I'm going to itemise everything and send it to a few model railway shops for valuation as a job lot. But I'm also going to have a go at valuing it based on what I think it was worth and what it could achieve by selling it on eBay or something like Facebook Marketplace. So I'd really be interested to get your valuations and feel free to share your workings down below. I'd also like your predictions on what I'll be offered by the model shops for the job lot, taking into account that they'll need to process it and make a profit reselling it. The full itemised list will be in the video description, so go check it out. And just to give you an idea of the size of the layout he had, this is the layout plan he was working to. I believe it's one of the largest ones that Hornby had in their track plan book. And he had every part of it, so I understand, including not just the track, but also all the buildings. There's a lot of stuff to go through. And I probably won't do it all in real time. I might cut bits, I might fast forward just so that this video doesn't go on for hours and hours. But as I say, the full itemized list will be down below in the description. So go check it out. Right, let's get going. And on top, we've got the original Triang Blue Pullman. Quite well played with by the looks of it. Don't know if any of this still works. Something Uncle Nick has told me is that some of these, if not all of them, will have been fitted with Hornby Zero One chips. So you might want to factor that into your valuation. I don't know whether that makes them more or less valuable. I would guess less valuable. I don't know. I'll take some of these apart, I guess, later on. We'll see how many locos we've got just to double check whether they do have Zero One chips in them. But it'll be interesting to see um, what the model shops make of zero one fitted chip so we've got the uh, power car the dummy car and the coach and these are incredibly well worn and well played with so i'm not sure they're going to be worth very much we've got a lima 09026 little shunter could be zero one fitted i don't know looks in fairly decent condition boxed a lot of this stuff is boxed as well so that's going to add to the value this has got number three written on it, so I assume it is chipped and possibly on address number three. This is an LMS 7P Princess Royal Loco. Let's open it up. So this has got the price on it from BT's, and I imagine this was bought in the 80s, possibly early 90s. $39.99, and there she is. And I think I've got this upstairs somewhere already in my collection. Fairly good condition, but obviously, an old tooling. I'm guessing it's probably actually worth similar to what my uncle paid at the time. I'd probably, what do you reckon? 40 quid for that? 50 quid? I don't know, not really my area of expertise, these um, older models, because I don't buy them. This one uh, is marked as number one and we've got the Flying Scotsman. So I'm guessing what that's what this comes from. Let's open her up and take a look. Yeah, I've got one of these upstairs as well. Pretty sure my dad had one. There you go. Looks in very good condition as well. I'd say that's probably worth a little bit more. Got a crew in there as well. The crew's down in the cab. I'm guessing this is chipped on uh, address number one based on what's written on the box. Right, I have a feeling I know what's in here. This is track underlay and I used this back in the 90s when I was building my layout and it disintegrates, it becomes dust. Um, I don't really want to get any more out of there, but that is just a box of dust. So I'm going to say that is disgusting and worthless. Uh, and it cost £3.60 back in the day from uh, Hadley Hobbies from Middlesex. Are they still going? Does anyone know? But I'm um, going to probably put that down here in the in the junk pile, another one there. I can see that it's 
disintegrating as well. Six ninety nine from BTs back in the day. These um, what are these LMS coaches? LMS composites, crimson lake color R four seven four. So we've got one of those. We've got an R four seven four, another R four seven four. So I think my uncle must have um, he had some decent length trains by the look of it. What's this? There's another R four seven four. So what do we think these are worth? They'll have the old style couplings, plastic wheels, not particularly representative of the original thing, lacking in a bit of detail. There's the brake version, so R475 in Crimson Lake as well to complete the, that'll be a uh, four coach train, I'm guessing. Although there's, there's another one in here. What's this? 474 again, another Crimson Lake uh, LMS coach. So that's a five coach train now. So old style couplings, plastic wheels, what do we think? I'd say what, at, at least a tenner per coach? Probably pay that, they are boxed, does that add anything? We've got some Intercity 125 coaches here. R489 Mark III in the gray livery. Uh, we've got one of them, two of them, four, three, R434. There's, a, there's the restaurant buffet car to go with that set. We've got another Intercity 125 Mark III there, uh, R434. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, another five coaches. Let's move those around to be next to the uh, LMS coaches. Again, what's that? Got to be another £10 per coach. Another box of dust. Uh, this is looking like a really old style who's made this there's a triang triang restaurant car some of the glazing's missing pretty uh pretty grubby don't know whether you can see that there's a fair amount of dust on that coach number 2401 um don't know what that comes with it doesn't look like it fits in with the rest of the stuff maybe that's from the previous era with the uh, blue pullman triang stuff rather than the stuff that my uncle bought in the 80s i don't know uh, maybe it goes along with this, the Dock Authority Shunter. Now that, that is a classic locomotive, I think. Number three, I don't have one of those. I can see some, some loose wire. I, that is not going to work, I can tell you now, because uh, I can see wires sticking out from the cab that should be attached to something. But I think that's a pretty iconic little shunter. How much is that worth? Not a clue. We've got a building, our first building from the Snapfit series. So this is the diesel locomotive shed, uh, diesel maintenance depot R516. And I, I'm not gonna open all these up. I'm gonna guess that they're pretty complete. Uh, it feels complete and it looks complete based on the amount of stuff that's in there. And I think given how much care my uncle has taken in packaging all this up, I would suspect it is is all there. Do, do people still buy these? Is there still a market for this older older stuff? I mean, knowing Hornby, it wouldn't surprise me if they're still selling this for about 50 quid as part of the main range. Our second building, and this one they are still making, the Quick Fit series, the waiting room, R523. I don't even know whether it's been updated since 576 back uh, from Welling Model World. Are they still going? Let me know in the comments. Right, we've got some wagons, some Lima wagons. So these are, they look, they're tankers. Amoco, Amoco, I don't know. Again, not really my era, but we've got one, two, three, four, four tankers. These actually look fairly detailed. If it wasn't for the couplings being the old style, uh, I think these would still be pretty good. Maybe the frame detail doesn't have as much as um, much detail as a modern tanker wagon would, but I actually think they're pretty good. And there we go, another tanker wagon. So we got five of those. Five seems to be the magic number. We've got five of each coach, five of each wagon so far. And then we've got some uh, Ami Roadstone, some hoppers. One, two, three, just as I've said, five is the magic number. We've got four, five, 
and six. Two ninety nine from BTs back in the day. Um, surely these these are definitely still worth something boxed. I'd say these are worth what? What are we saying? Five to five to seven quid boxed. They're in pretty mint condition if you give them a bit of a dust down. I couldn't work out what these were when I first picked them up. They're point motors, the old style point motors, and I won't get them out, but. They're the uh, solenoid types that um, push this little hooked pin in and out. We've got loads in there. Do people still use these? I'd need to do my research again. Uh, not a type of point motor that I have purchased in recent years. What have we got in here? Some accessories, a signal box, quick fit signal box. No, it's not. It's in the wrong box. This is a, that's a water tower. But presumably there's a water tower in here that contains a signal box. And that's in mint condition and people would still buy that, I reckon. So what's that worth? That's got to be worth a few quid. If we get the right box, we'll match that back up. Uh, we've got a few loose bits and pieces here. We've got a James Hargreaves and Son uh, from Leeds, coal wagon again, in fairly decent condition, needs a bit of a dust. One, the wheels have popped out. I think that's because it's been crushed in the box. Uh, another wagon, old style couplings though. And this is a very old one. This is a, a Triang. So again, a previous era. This is interesting. This is, um, well, it's obviously a crane and the chain has come off. It's not very detailed and it seems a bit beaten up and it definitely needs a clean. So probably not worth very much that one. We've got a, a, a brick wagon. But uh, yeah, another loose wagon, probably not worth very much. A few quid in the bargain box. A bit of loose canopy there. Uh, another loose wagon. Shell lubricating oil wagon. It's a few, few quid in the bargain bucket, isn't it? Right, what's this one? A girder bridge. Did everyone have one of these girder bridges back in the day? I did on my layout when I was a kid. But it's not a girder bridge. Good job we checked, eh? It is, I don't want to tip this out. This is full of bits. I can see level crossing barriers in here and street lights and yeah. So a box of bits. So don't include that in your valuation. There is no girder bridge in that one. That's just stuff. Next up, uh, a Hornby Triang box. Now in new BR livery, what could it be? an operating Royal Mail coach set. And if this is in here, I'm actually really interested in this. R402, if you're interested. Uh, there is a coach in Royal Mail uh, blue gray livery. It's not one I've seen before, but it's got the, um, it's got the triang, the little levers that open up the, uh, that one. There you go. That's how you collect the uh, the post and it flips it out the other side. All still functioning. Sort of still boxed. I don't know how it was meant to go. Presumably there were some accessories that came with this, like um, maybe a hook to hang the post on. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Everything's pretty grubby. I'm going to need to have a good wash after this. A track cleaning coach. These definitely still sell, especially if they're still boxed, R296. Uh, um, these are the ones that have got the two little pads underneath. I'm pretty sure these are still worth a few quid. Another girder bridge. Doesn't feel like a girder bridge to me though. This is uh, a footbridge. Well, I expect they're still selling this. One of those ones with the green lattice um, football, like railings, that's the word I'm looking for. The booking hall, all still there, and I can see the glazings in there as well, so we'll assume that's intact. Um, comes complete with the luggage and the weighing scales and all that. What is this? This, I've never ever seen this before. Have you guys? R515, an operating conveyor set. It may be used as shown with R528 operating tipper set. 
and it's for moving, I don't know, ballast, I guess. This was expensive at the time, £19.25. I would like to get that out and play with it. Please be in here. Yes, complete. Complete and boxed and mint. Look at that. I'm going to get that out and play with it when I'm back from holiday. 100% that looks like a bit of fun. Probably hours of frustration when it doesn't quite work or just tips ballast all over the place. But I'm actually looking really, really looking forward to having a play with that. And this is the operating tipper set. So we've got both parts, R528. So I assume this is in here as well. I haven't been in the hobby as long as some people, but it's actually quite unusual for me to come across things that I haven't ever seen before. And this one is completely new to me. I mean, there's stuff that I haven't seen from like the Triang period or like the O gauge, like the original Hornby tin plate stuff. I don't know anything about that, but this era, this is the era that I grew up in. My dad had it. It's all up to now. Yeah, it's in there. We're getting that out to have a play with it at some point for sure. And then we've got a, a power controller, the R900. And that is the end of box number one, I think. So let's move that down here. Um, let's move this stuff over so you can see, put it all on display so you can get your calculators out and uh, work out how much that, how much Monk was gonna make. Is he gonna be rich? Um, this box looks like chaos, I'll be honest. A lot of um, risers in this bag, you know, the ones that used to lift the track up. Guessing there's still a market for those. People still want those track risers for the Hornby track plans. And there's the girder bridges. There's two girder bridges in there. They're the ones that we had the boxes for. Sorry, a bit more rustling because we've got carrier bags and this is, we're in the realms of track now. Loads and loads of track. So these are all really small bits. Um, it'll all be steel, no silver nickel stuff. Made in Austria. Some a couple of level crossings in there. They're still selling this stuff in um, track packs, identical, to, just with silver nickel. Does steel track have any value these days? I don't know, probably not. You got the old style points in here as well, the ones with the little um, turny thing rather than the innie outy. Do you want to get too technical on you there? But the, uh, yeah, some people might call it flippy. Flippy turny. There's just going to be tons of track in here. I'm not going to get it all out. Um, got canopies, loads of platform canopies there. Is that a good shed? We've got the signal box in there, that's for sure. And I think that is either a good shed or an engine shed. Woodland Scenics, old style uh, ballast. Come on, track out the way. We've got another bag of bits here. All the platformy bits. Some picket fencing, buffer stops. Look like some um, electric light signals in there though, some coloured light signals. The good old fashioned track rubbers in there. Some more ballast stuff. God knows what this is. More bits. There's something wrapped up in, I, do I open this? And what's, what's wrapped up? Curiosity's got the better of me. There's something wrapped up in tissue. Anything wrapped up in tissue's gotta be special. Right, let's open this together. What is it? Someone's gone to the trouble of wrapping this in tissue. It's gotta be good. It is three tiny bits of track. You know what these are. These go on the, the Hornby turntable. So I was wrong. Stuff that's wrapped in tissue paper isn't always exciting. Some Sooth Flieger spray. I'm guessing this is some sort of lubricant. I'm going to put it in the trash pile. All the switches, all the signal switches, and Uncle Nick has labelled them all. So I assume they were all in use at some point. Uh, and just tons of track. I think there is stuff under here. So yeah, we've got. Oh, do we move this? Yeah, come on. Yeah, here we go. There it is. The Hornby turntable. I think this one is not motorized. This is the one where you turn the handle and it goes. <laughs> the mechanism is quite clever. It's just really noisy. 
right, I don't think the rest of this box is going to be particularly interesting. Zero one instructions. So there's another box down there. I'm pretty sure that's got all the zero one stuff in. And I think this is just all wiring and track. There is a black bag at the bottom. What do we keep del delving into here? All this horrible track. These are metal, metal station canopy pillars. These are nice. With loads of wiring, not gonna get that out. Oh, I can see what's in the bin bag. I think, can you guess? Can you guess from the sound? That is the sound of platforms. Loads and loads of platforms. Hornby are still selling this new as well today. So there must be some value in there. I think the rest of this is just track. If I show you, if I tilt the box towards this camera, there you go, you can get an idea of what's in there. It's all pretty rusty. What would you give me for that? What, anything? There must be a market for it somewhere. I don't know. Am I, can I be bothered to go through and itemize it all? Not tonight, that's for sure. I might just list it as box of steel track. Right, we're on to the final box. This one is quite interesting. It's got the zero one stuff in it. It's got the, another track plan with all the points marked out and a zero one operating manual. I've become a bit obsessed with zero one. This is a very special bit of kit. The first truly digital, commercial, mass produced command station. So these are incredible. 1979, they were released. I think my uncle picked this up in the 19, early 1980s. And he would have probably been one of the first adopters of truly digital model railwaying. It's not in great condition. I was gonna say no one uses zero one these days. That isn't true. There are people out there who still keep zero one alive. Yeah, this one definitely had some use. My uncle said that everything was controlled by the zero one. So I'll pop that down here. Unfortunately, they haven't held their value particularly well. A uh, little BT's bag, as if it was bought yesterday. Got track rubbers. Uh, what's that, some oil. Specially recommended for trying trains. Shell lubricating oil. More track. This is all the long stuff. There's the car transporter. Triang R342, a bit busted up. And obviously the cars have come off, but put that with the rest of the Triang stuff over here. And now we've got a few more Locos. This was £23.90 back in the day. And it is uh, Class 86 Electric Phoenix. Looks in very good condition. You can see the pantograph is all still there. I reckon this would still be worth a few quid. This one is a Triang Loco. Rovex Industries Limited. Retro. Stuff is falling out. I think that's a bug and rather a bit of a loco. I'm not sure what's worse actually, if there are dead bugs falling out of it. This is really exciting. I've wanted one of these for ages. I'm probably gonna keep this, I think. It's the Intercity train pack, uh, the 125 in the uh, executive livery. So this goes with all those coaches. We've got five coaches. So you've got the full set there, I think bit beaten up at the edges, but that's pretty much mint condition. Assuming it works, I'm guessing it's um, zero one fitted, but that's gotta be 50, 60 quid. Let's get this track out of the way. Stabbing myself. I think there might be some spiders lurking in here and I'm not a big fan. Ugh, don't know what that was. What is in here? Another ominous black sack. I think that is the, oh, we've got one what should we open first? The big black sack or the little paper bag? Let's move the box out of the way. Good things come in small packages, we'll save that. What's in the black bag? Oh yeah, we were right, to, we were right not to open this last. This is just a load of wiring. That's a load of cabling. That's boring. That's probably worthless. So before we open this final package, and I have no idea what's in here, it's probably gonna be a bit of a disappointment, but please let me know in the comments how much you think this is all worth. 
As I said, I'm gonna send uh, an itemized list out to the likes of Rails of Sheffield and maybe a few others and see what they come back with as a valuation. But I'd like to get your thoughts on what you think I'd get if I was to list this all either individually or as a job lot on eBay. And we'll see how much of a difference there is because I've heard that sometimes model railway shops lowball people. They give you a, a massive underestimate of worth, even factoring in that they're gonna have to uh, take it in, test it, upload it to their websites, market it, package it, send it out. You know, I think they still sometimes are a little bit cheeky. So I'm not going to send it out from my account or my name. I'm going to send it from someone who is nothing to do with the channel. So there's no chance of them clocking on to who I am just in case they have heard of the channel. And obviously I won't be putting this video out until I've got their quotes back. Let's open our final package. And this is <laughs> absolutely nothing to do with model railways. These are flights from a dart. And what is this? This is a dart sharpener. And there we go. I told you it might be an anticlimax. These are flights for a dart. And on that note, thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. It's very much appreciated. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.